Attack on Titan Part 2 End of the World is quite an anomaly in the franchise's popularity, especially when you watch the infamous white room scene that occurs not too far in the film. Aaron wakes up in a mysterious white room with a jukebox playing Skeeter Davis's End of the World, which is the same song Mikasa plays in the piano back in Part 1. Suddenly, the music stops, and behind Aaron is Shikishima, who then proceeds to tell him government conspiracies with footage to back them up. One of the biggest central plot points seen in Attack on Titan End of the World is how the government manipulates the remaining population of the world to its will, and how they're responsible for the Titans appearing once again. The citizens see the walls as a sort of a safe haven to keep the Titans out, when really, it is a prison. And the government uses the Titans which were originally created from a mishap from a government experiment to either enhance or weaponize the human body as a means of population control. Thus whoever joins the military are being sent out to their deaths so the government can maintain control of the population and achieve economic stability, which in turn projects a false reality. This concept is very reminiscent to MKUltra, which was a mind control program by the CIA in which test subjects were put through experiments that dealt with the alteration of a person's mental state and brain function. Methods such as drugs, hypnosis, and torture were involved in the process. MKUltra is essentially used to create a false perception of reality. In the manga, there have been instances where the government would go after those who dare to escape their walled civilization so that they may not see the true world they live in which heavily influenced the same concept in the film, in which venturing outside the walls was illegal and those who would attempt to do so would be shot on sight. Aaron is the first character we see in the films to describe the walls as a prison, which then drives him to explore the outside. But the government will do anything to control the population. Director Kubal says that modern technology brought upon war and destruction, explaining their absence in the world they live in. However, it is evident that the military police does have access to guns and modern technology. And it is even said that the military police have skyscrapers where they live, while everyone else lives in agriculture. Early in the first film, the colossal titan, who is later revealed to be director Kubal, appears right outside the outer wall where Aaron, Armin, Mikasa, and Soto were standing, and even looks down upon them. How could Kubal have known that these people were standing near the wall, talking about an expedition where they could venture outside and transform at that exact moment in their exact location? This is actually an ability people from secret government societies who force their own specific agendas and ideologies onto others, or a cabal if you will, can supposedly use at their will, in which they possess remote viewing capabilities. At the very end of part 2, we see a room, very much like Shikishima's, in which government officials have been monitoring everything that has ever happened up to this point. As you can see from the footage they are viewing, there is no way any camera would be in that area, which only adds to the ones in power having remote viewing capabilities. There is a moment where the character Soda tries to defend Aaron on trial, explaining why he is innocent, but is then shot and killed with the help of director Kubal, in which he tries to pass him off as a rambling drunkard. And eventually, Soda reveals to Aaron that he has a brother, who happens to be Shikishima. Why was this not mentioned earlier? While this definitely explains Shikishima's interest in Eren, it's very likely that the two were separated by the government at young ages. And as you can see here, Soda's dead body is lying on the ground with his eyes wide open. Not just literally, eyes being wide open can refer to the Illuminati's all-seeing eye. The eye is wide open because it is fully aware of what is happening behind the curtain. And when someone's eyes are wide shut, then they are unaware of the truth. Judging by Soda's association with the Jaeger family, we can safely assume that Eren was raised by Soda, and due to Shikishima's association with director Kubal, it is very likely that he may have been the one to raise Shikishima. This would also explain his possession of knowledge from the past and remnants as well. Also, notice how in the scene where Shikishima reveals the Titan's origins to Eren, the camera focuses on Eren's eyes, as they have become wide open in this very moment. There's a plot point in the manga where those who can transform into titans all possess great amounts of knowledge related to the titan's history, as each one is passed down. This is also why the characters who truly know what is happening in the films are Eren, Shikishima, and Kubal. However, there is another character who may possess this knowledge too, despite not being a titan, Mikasa Ackerman. Compare Mikasa's personality early in part 1, and then later on. She has completely changed, and her attitude towards Eren is more blunt and hesitant. There is a possibility that she is high in the fact that she has become enlightened by Shikishima in a way, as we see her at his side most of the time. Let's take the instance where Mikasa chooses not to help Eren after his leg has been bitten off, and then later on she realizes that Eren could transform into a titan without having to see him come out. 
As for her relationship with Shikishima, it's very likely that he is the one who has enlightened her, and manipulated her mental state to where her eyes are wide open. Notice how she doesn't really pay attention to the Eger brothers arguing in the scene. It's very likely that her interactions with Shikishima have caused her to act as if nothing really matters. In the end, letting go of what needs protecting makes you stronger. That's what he always said to me. I had nothing, so I turned away from everything. My memories, my dreams. And speaking of Eren's Titan form, there is a sort of demonic significance to it when he transforms. Within death, Eren merges with the Titan through a serum that has been injected to his body at a young age, therefore attaining a new life and a new power. A literal deal with the devil. And yet this concept is also present in the manga, in which the chapter explaining these origins of the Titans was released long after the films. In the end, the White Room and Attack on Titan Part 2 is a major plot element in the live-action duology, as its significance impacts the entirety of both films as a whole, and gives Attack on Titan a whole new perspective. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time.